Hello. In today's reflection for Thy Kingdom Come, I'd like us all to think about the idea of sorry, the word sorry. Now, uh, today we think of sorry as just it's part of everyday life. Um, <clears throat> we think of it in the sense of an apology. If you've done something wrong to someone, you would offer an apology. Uh, and if they've done something bad, uh, wrong against you, you would expect an apology as well. Now, not many people would know this, but the idea of sorry being an apology is actually a very recent idea. Um, it's from the 1860s. It only became uh, to be used in, in the sense of offering an apology for something. And that's quite interesting. Uh, even more recently, we uh, hear phrases that have been popularized. Sorry for that. Um, it's a very popular idea to just easily say sorry for something that uh, you have done that was intended, or, or perhaps not intended, that hurt someone. Uh, but what the strange thing about this idea these days, though, is you can, you can say you're sorry without actually feeling sorry, can't you? Uh, every one of us has come across situations where someone has offered an apology and we can tell they don't really mean it, do they? They just say the phrase because it's it's the done thing, isn't it? So what I thought was quite useful, actually, is to look at the history of how sorry has been um, understood. You see, before the 1860s, Sorry wasn't an apology at all. Um, in fact, the word sorry has a long history that uh, goes back into Old English and Old uh, Germanic and the Old Germanic languages, basically, um, Old Dutch and Old uh, Swedish as well. In the Old English sense, it was uh, conveyed in, uh, in a feeling of being distressed, grieved, and it's connected with uh, feeling full of sorrow. But the, the root is to be sore. Now, this idea of being sore isn't in the physical sense. It's an emotional. It's an inner sense of, of feeling sore. And in the, the most extreme uh, sense of the meaning, it's to feel wretched, to feel worthless, to feel poor. And so my question to you is, when was the last time that you offered an apology for something when you, you actually felt wretched, worthless and poor before you actually offered that apology? You see, quite often we can say the word sorry and it doesn't actually mean anything because we don't have that connection of the emotional anguish that we might be going through because we've hurt someone or because we've been hurt by something that we did or someone else has done. We need that uh, that emotion to be soothed. We need that to be addressed. And so you might think of uh, sorry in the sense of the um, popular music uh, song by Blue. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. And that's a good thing. It does seem to be the hardest word to say but only if there is an attachment of this anguish, this emotional turmoil that you might be going through before you offer an apology. If we turn to scripture, we can see an example of this. And, the, and see an example of the purpose of being sorry, actually. Paul writes in his second letter to the church in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians, he speaks about the fact that the reaction from the Corinthian church was not a very good one to his first letter. Let's read in verse, uh, well, in chapter 7 uh, and verse 8 following. Even if I caused you sorrow by my, by my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance, for you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, 
but worldly sorrow brings death. And so this is the point that I'd like to make for us all today. Verse 10 says, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation. If we feel sorry for the things that we've done, that we know is against God's law, that we know hurts God, that we know hurts our fellow believers or, or even non-believers, sorry is a feeling that comes before repentance. Often we feel that uh, to be sorry is a bad thing, but actually it's a good thing because it changes our heart. It leads to something that is better and more wholesome. And so I would lead you, leave you with that this morning, uh, this evening, whenever you listen to this video. And let me pray with you, if that's okay. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for the fact that godly sorrow leads to repentance. Father, I pray for anyone who's feeling sorry at the moment. I pray that that feeling would cause a stirring in their hearts, whatever it may be over, that they would seek to do something about it. If we are sorry that we've hurt a family member or a friend, we ask that you would help us, give us the courage to apologize and to share the fact that we are sorrowful with that person that is so special to us. And Lord, if we've done anything against you that has caused us sorrow, a feeling of wretchedness and poorness in our hearts, we pray that you would cause that to turn us to you, that we might repent and that we, that we might receive your forgiveness, which is freely available in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's all for me. Have a good day.